Hi, everyone. Let me just give you a few minutes to get this uh, cookery class populated. If you are here, please give me a thumbs up or say hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're here, say hello. Please let me know that you're here. So I can see that, yeah, people can hear me. I know we did a little test before. Thank you for everyone that commented. If you can maybe just give me a thumbs up, let me know that you are here and that you're watching and you can hear me. Okay, yeah, we can see some people. Hello. Got more than one viewer. Woohoo! Amazing. Hi, Declan. Thank you for saying hello. Welcome to my kitchen. This is such a strange feeling. I'm so used to having a room, a kitchen full of students and um, it's just me and a camera. So slightly different setup. Do say hello if you're here or give me a thumbs up so I can, uh, can see that you're here to join the class. And if you are cooking along today, maybe pop a comment saying yes to let me know that you're cooking along. You're, if you just want to watch and that's absolutely fine, of course it is. But if you are, um, if you are actually cooking along, let me know and pop a, a yes in the comments for me. I'm just going to give it a few, thank you very much, thumbs up. Hi Howard. Great to have you. Okay, I'm going to give it another couple of minutes. Let's just get um, this a little bit more populated, get people logged on. <laughs> Hi, Christine and Mike. I hope you're well. Long time no see. Let me know where you are right now. Is the sun shining where you are? Right now it's, I'm in a glorious sunny Birmingham, which I don't get to say that very often. But yeah, it's looking pretty nice here. Whereabouts are you? Hi, Mum. Mum's here. Currently, I uh, haven't seen Mum for a while, actually. Um, I'm here in Bourne, Mum's in Manchester. Hi, Gareth, Kathleen, hi, Janet. Sale, very cool. Bolton and very sunny. North Devon, Kathy, hello. Ah, oh, fantastic, we've got North Wales. <laughs> Thanks, Peter, yes, noted. Cool, all right. We have got Christine in the Swiss Alps. Amazing, okay. Fab. Nice to see you, Kerry, as well. Great, well, we'll I'll get started. Um, I would say welcome to my kitchen. I'm actually at home, and I'm not even in my kitchen at home. <laughs> my kitchen's just there, but the lighting is pretty uh, pretty poor um, in my actual kitchen. So I've set up a pop-up kitchen here in, um, in my living room, which I'm a little bit worried about because, generally speaking, spices, especially um, turmeric, uh, and living rooms don't mix. Uh, hi, Dad. <laughs> um, hi, Tessa. Hi, Lynn. But we're going to go with it. We're just going to rock and roll, and uh, we'll go. We'll go with the flow. Um, it is my very, very first live uh, spice club cookery class. So do bear with me. We're going to cook together, um, and I'm going to try and manage your comments and keep in touch with you at the same time. So bear with me. We'll do this together first time doing this and keep uh, keep interacting with me as well let me know uh, by giving me a thumbs up um, if you're still here and you're still cooking along and any questions that you have along the way um, please just pop them in the comments but yeah if you are cooking along do pop in a, a big yes in your um, in the comments for me so I know that you are cooking Cool, great. Well, we've got quite a few people here, so let's get started. So um, for those of you who don't know me, I'll just quickly introduce myself. My name is Monica. I run the Spice Club Cookery School uh, in Manchester and also Birmingham. Um, and the ethos for me from the get-go has always been to showcase home-style regional Indian food. So we're talking Indian food from all over India, um, and it really does vary depending on where you are. 
And then we're also talking family recipes. So we're talking the kind of stuff that my grandma used to cook for my mum. And then mum uh, shared those recipes with me. And now I feel like it's my sort of personal responsibility to share these recipes with all of you guys. So woohoo for all of you. Um, and yeah, very passionate about using fresh ingredients, really cooking from scratch. And sometimes with Indian recipes, it can seem like this big daunting task. Um, but I, um, I'm here to really break everything down for you. And especially with the current climate that we're in, um, you know, it's harder to get stuff and we're all at home. So I think this is a really good opportunity for us to maybe reach into our store cupboard, staples, our pantry and see what we can get out and what we can use. So this recipe is great for stuff like that because it's so easy and quick and we generally have potatoes in, I'd like to think. Hi, Abby. Um, hi, Peter. Great. Okay, so today's dish. Today's dish is called sukha alu or sukhe alu. Um, and sukhe uh, refers to um, the fact that it's a dry dish. So this is not a saucy potato curry. It's a quite a dry, spiced potato dish. And as a result, it's usually served with bread, chapatis, puris, if anyone's ever... Has anyone ever had those puffed up fried puri breads? Let me know. They're amazing and we tear them apart and we, we sort of um, uh, eat it with our spiced sukhe alu and it's, we actually have it for breakfast. Punjabi, if there's any Punjabis in the house, let me know. Um, really, really tasty. So, hello Amanda, by the way. Let me know if you're cooking along to this, this afternoon. Um, top, pop in a, a, a yes or a, a like, a thumbs up for me. Um, so let's talk about potatoes. If you are cooking along, I have mentioned that the ingredients list is up on my Facebook page and hopefully um, you will have your potatoes at the ready. So um, potatoes here. I mentioned in my post that I really, um, I really like to cook my potatoes in the microwave because it's so, so quick and easy. Of course you can boil them. Um, and I tend to have red potatoes in. You can use whichever potato you like, baby potato, jacket potato, King Edwards, whatever you have. Hello, Michelle in America. Very cool. Thank you very much for letting me know. Um, so just to let you know, if you've never cooked a potato in a microwave, or it works really well with sweet potatoes too, it's really easy. And best thing about it, there is zero washing up to do, which is, um, Amazing. I hate washing up. So, hi Jackie. Um, so yeah, um, all you need to do to microwave your potato, pop your potato in a bag. I've just got a freezer safe bag here. You can use like a, a plastic uh, grocery bag, a small one. Make sure it's clean though. Uh, my potato's already washed. And then give it a tie up and a little hole, pierce a hole through the bag. And then you just bung that in the microwave. So for the amount of potatoes that I've asked you for for this recipe you're probably looking at about eight to ten minutes on high it does vary depending on your microwave but then the best thing about it is there's no washing up and also the potatoes peel incredibly easy as well so you can just if you have your potatoes cooked if i can ask you just to start peeling the skin off um and it should come off fairly easily and fairly quickly. So that's the first step that we're gonna do. Hello, Arnie, he's watching from Malaysia. Fantastic. How's the weather in Malaysia today, Arnie? And do you um, do you cook Indian food at home? Um, so let's give our potatoes a peel first. Um, this really speeds up the cooking. You know, if you're cooking potato dishes from raw potato in your dish, it can take quite a while for them to cook in, in a sauce and you have to simmer them down and and get them, you know, really cooking until tender. This is most of the, the time um, in the cooking is, is in cooking the potato and these are already done now. So, hi Delona, how are you doing? And Bindi, nice to see you here. Okay, so once your potatoes are peeled and I'll give you all just a minute to peel your potatoes, we're going to chop them, okay? And we're gonna chop them into small bite-sized pieces. And I'll show you how big um, your potato chunk sizes need to be. We're talking sort of bite size. Now that does vary depending on how big your bite is. We're talking an average bite size, okay? So let me, um, let me show you how big we're talking here. So roughly about this big. So just small little bite size chunks, roughly around this big. 
Hi Rohit. Let me know where you're tuning in from, by the way, everyone. Where are we in the world? Also, let me know if you've been to a cookery class before, and if you have, is it Manchester or Birmingham? Um, love to know if you've been to a class before. I do recognise some, there are some regulars here that I can see. So, let me know uh, where you are. So we're looking at making these potatoes just in bite-sized chunks this size. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop up all of my potatoes now. And this serving should probably be good for um, three to four people. So, pop this inside. Just do my last two now. Joy, yeah, you came to a class in, White, in Manchester at mum's house. Tessa, yeah, you've been uh, to Manchester and missing the April class. I know it's it's quite sad that we've had to cancel our classes, but um, hopefully we'll be getting uh, new class dates up very, very soon. Hi, Michelle, long time no see. Hope you're well. Janet, and you came with Janice, brilliant, in Manchester, fantastic. Any, any bummies in the house? Anyone been to my Birmingham classes? Say hello. Okay. So, let me know um, how you're getting on with the potatoes. This is what they look like. Just small bite-sized pieces. They just cut through incredibly easy. So, this is the sort of the time-consuming bits already done. If you're making this for a dinner party, you could do this the day before, you know, keep them in the fridge. Um, it's really easy, okay? So this is what the time-consuming part is. Potatoes are done now. Hi Kerry, you came with Andy and did the Rajasthani class in Birmingham. Oh brilliant, hello to your daughter who you're cooking with, that's amazing. So um, I'm just going to clean my board and clean my knife now because we're going to move on to our onion. And by the way, if anyone thinks that I'm going too quickly, just say. It's the first time I'm doing this so let me know. If you think I'm speeding along, I'll slow down, tell me to just chill out in the comments. Monica, chill out, and I will do that. This dish, actually, um, was one of the first things that I learned from mum. Um, when I, I think I was going to uni, and mum said, um, you need to know how to make this dish, because, you know, you have a microwave, you always have potatoes, really, really good. So, uh, Lynn, you said your spuds are ready, fantastic. Everyone else, if you've got your potatoes ready, this is what they should look like, all chopped up into small, uh, bite-sized chunks. Hi, Brett. Came to a Birmingham class. Fantastic. Well, you were due to. Hopefully, we'll have you over soon. Hi, Hazel. Hi, Christine. So, we're going to move over to the onion now. Um, so, with the onion, just going to top and tail it first. And we're going to cut it in half. So, top and tail, okay? And then cut in half. And then I'm just going to peel it. Um, and then we're going to do long thin slices. So I'm just peeling this first. And I'm quite mindful not to get the top layer off. I, I really hate wasting food. So I always like to just get the skin off only if I can. Just cut my nail so everything's a little bit harder. Ah, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to now, so if you see these lines on the onion, that will help us make long thin slices on our onion. So, can you see, let me bring this down a little bit so you can see a bit better. Um, we're going to do long, thin slices. So, a sharp knife is helpful in a situation like this. Okay, and I'm going to do the next half. So, onions are now nicely sliced. You can use red onions for this, you can use shallots, you can use spring onions for this. Um, what do they call spring onions in America? Scallions? Scallions? Whatever. Shalots? I think I'm taking the mic now. Um, whatever, whatever you can get your hands on. Onions wise, just use what's in your fridge. Onions are ready, potatoes are ready. Okay, we're now going to talk about um, our spices. All right, I'm going to bring over my cooker. Now, like I said, I'm not in my kitchen, I'm actually in my living room. So I've just brought my camping stove out. For those of you that might have come to a tandoori cookery class, you may have seen my little 
gas stove that I like to pop out from time to time. <laughs> How are we doing on the onions? Are our onions done? Let me know. Hi Dina, Gencho, how are you doing? Are you cooking along with us today? Okay, so I'm gonna switch my stove on. And um, whilst I'm here, I'm gonna pop in some oil. So I've got some sunflower oil in here. I'm gonna pop it, probably looking to put in a couple of tablespoons, a couple of glugs, if you will. That's an official measurement, by the way, a glug. Christine's got her onions ready, fabulous. So looking to put in, hi Rachel. I remember you, I remember teaching your year 11s. Nice to see you here. Lizzie's got her onions ready. So if you get your pan on now, and I've got a non-stick sort of heavy pan, but you can use, non-stick's ideal, especially with potatoes, if you can use a non-stick pan. We're gonna put in a couple of tablespoons of oil. It doesn't matter what oil you use here. You can use coconut oil, you can use um, olive oil. I'm just using sunflower oil because it's quite a neutral oil. And um, we want to get this nice and hot. And there's a really um, big reason why we need to get our onions hot. So the first spice that we're going to put in here, do you guys know what this is? It was on the list, so it's not exactly a, a shock. It's, it's cumin seeds, yeah. So cumin seeds are here. This is gonna be the first spice that goes in our oil, okay? So it's really important whenever you're cooking with spices that are going in, whole spices that are going in the oil first, is that um, your oil needs to be hot. Heat is what brings the flavor out of your spices. I mentioned this a lot in my cookery classes. So sorry if you're irregular and you've heard this before. Um, so the cumin, um, you need to get this um, we're going the oil rather, you need to get it really hot and the cumin's gonna go in. Then you're gonna get that lovely impact of flavor, that nutty flavor is gonna just explode into your oil and you're gonna get a really infused oil. If your oil's cold and you put your cumin in, nothing happens, okay? So you need that oil to be nice and hot and I can feel this now, it's hot. If you ever want to sort of test the temperature of the oil, um, you can just drop a couple of cumin seeds in the oil and they should begin. Um, to sizzle. So mine are just about beginning to do that. I'm going to bring my camera a little bit closer to you so you can see. Let me bring this a bit closer. Can you guys all see? Let me know. Can you see click? Can you see the pan clearly? Hi Zoe, great to see you. You're an old schooler. You used to come to our supper clubs in Whitefield. Fab to have you here. Can we all see up the pan? I just want to make sure that the vision is good. You guys can see what's happening here. Let me know that it is, and then I'll start with the cooking. Can we see everything in the pan, guys? Okay, fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. So oil is hot. I'm now gonna put in, we're gonna put in a good teaspoon of cumin seeds, okay? It's really important that we, we um, have a wooden spoon by our side so nothing's going to burn and we can cook quickly. As soon as the onion, the cumin goes in, we're gonna put our onions in to so have them ready because we don't want anything to burn. So first of all, I'm gonna put in cumin seeds, so a good teaspoon of cumin seeds. In fact, I'm gonna put in half more. So about a teaspoon and a half, give that a really good mix, and then all the onions are gonna go in. And you can hear them crackle and splatter, and that's perfect. So I've literally given the cumin about five seconds. So we're gonna mix the onions in the cumin now. And break the onions down using your wooden spoon. Hi Rachel, yeah, we had a class tomorrow. It would have been lovely to have you there. Maybe you can show him this video instead. <laughs> so we want to get a little bit of color on our onions, not too much. We want to really soften them, so keep them moving in the pan. If you ever feel, oh, I just disconnected, or all good, okay. If you ever feel like your onions are catching, you can add in a little bit more oil at any point. So just, you know, you can just add a little, a couple of drops of oil, or you can use a little bit of water. But here we go. 
this is looking really good and it should be smelling incredibly nutty and flavour. That's the, the beautiful fragrance that cumin seeds give off. Joy saying that it smells gorgeous already. This is on a sort of medium heat right now. We're just keeping our onions moving. And in a second, we're just going to give this a few more seconds. We're going to pop in our tomato puree. So I've got double concentrate tomato puree. Before we put this in, um, there is, I've just realised, <laughs> ha ha ha, this is uh, what happens when you do things for the first time. Um, whilst I'm talking, I've just turned this off because I don't want this to burn. So um, before we put the tomato puree in, um, one thing that I didn't mention on the ingredients list is that you just need a little bit of water and this is going to help slacken the tomato paste. So if you can, maybe turn the pan off and quickly get a little cup of water. Sorry, I just realised that I never mentioned that before. So hopefully you're near a sink. Um, hi Denise. Let me know how everything's going for you, by the way, if you're cooking along. And if you are just watching, give me a wave or say hi so I know what you're doing if you're watching or if you are cooking. So if you've got your water ready, um, now is the time I'm going to put my pan back on and we're going to pop the tomato puree. So I've got about, roughly, um, two good teaspoons, two heaped teaspoons of tomato puree. Okay. If you don't have tomato puree, you can use passata and maybe you could use about four or five tablespoons of passata. But um, double concentrate puree if you can. That's going to go in here now. So popping that in. And before I, um, before I mix it, I'm going to pop in a little bit of water. Hi Jess, nice to see you. So maybe about three or four tablespoons of water. Give it a good mix now. And you should begin to see this sauce, this masala form. So if you've just come back from getting water, you just need a couple of, um, maybe about three or four tablespoons of water just to help the tomato puree mix in with onions. Otherwise what happens is, you know, it becomes very, very dry. So it's nice to just add in, and I'm just gonna add a little bit more, just to help slack it and help the tomato puree mix really well with the onions. Also means that nothing's gonna catch and nothing's gonna burn. So tomato puree has gone in, and you can see this sort of really lovely paste that's beginning to form here. So slightly on the dry side, but um, this is perfect. So how are we looking, guys? Is this, are we getting to this stage? Give me a, a yes or a thumbs up if we are. So this is now done. We're now gonna add in our potatoes followed by our spices, okay? So Peter, he's just rushed to get some water. Yeah, you're gonna put your heat back on. You're gonna pop in your tomato puree. And then you're gonna probably put in about four or five tablespoons of water and then you're gonna mix it all together, okay? So you're looking for the paste to look a little bit like, like this. So apologies for um, missing that out, sorry. Can we use, Dina's asked, can we use fresh tomatoes instead of passata? Yeah, you absolutely can. I would just finely dice the fresh tomatoes um, and then just cook them down a little bit so they're softened. But yeah, that, that would work really well. Lizzie said it smells lovely. It does, it smells absolutely beautiful. We're now going to add in potatoes. So once you've got this lovely paste on the go, we're going to add in the turtles. In they go. And I'm going to use my hand to just break them up a little bit because they're sort of stuck together because they're nice and starchy, aren't they? Do you know what? If you um, are introducing children to spices, could make this dish um, with sweet potato instead. It works incredibly well. Um, it's just a nice way of introducing spices to, to young kids that, you know, are kind of getting their palate used to new flavours. So I've spread out the potatoes. I haven't just blobbed them in the middle. Um, and the reason for that is because it just helps my spices when I add them in. It helps them just uh, spread and mix a little bit easier and a little bit quicker, okay? So um, I've got Himalayan pink salt here today. You can use table salt, fine salt, sea salt, whatever you have at home, not big deal. 
Um, and it's salt to taste, so I'm going to put in roughly about a, a teaspoon and a pinch, maybe about a teaspoon and a quarter. So I've got a teaspoon that I've put in and I'm gonna put in a quarter down. So I'll give you a little bit more of a zoom in there. Can we see that? Okay, so I've now put my pan on a very low heat because I don't want anything to burn. Next thing I'm gonna do is add in paprika. So a level teaspoon. In fact, I'm gonna go a good teaspoon of paprika. Paprika adds really gorgeous warmth and beautiful colour to this dish as well. So salt's in there, about a teaspoon and a quarter. Paprika, I've put in a good teaspoon of paprika. Garam masala, so garam masala is a wonderful Indian spice blend. We always make our own at home. This is the Spice Club garam masala. This is mum's secret recipe. Um, but yeah, whatever garam masala you have at home, this is the time to add it. And you're gonna put in a level teaspoon of garam masala in here. followed by, and this is the optional ingredient if you do not have this, but this is sun-dried mango powder. This is what's called amchur, amchur. And the mangoes, when they're picked, they're actually very sour and tart. So this adds wonderful tanginess to the dish, works really well potatoes, roughly about a quarter teaspoon. Someone has asked, is this smoked paprika? No, um, Peter, this is just plain. If you don't have the amchur in, just um, leave it out, okay? I'm now going to bring my heat up to medium and give this a little bit of a mix. So we've got salt in there, paprika in there, we've got our mango powder in there. These are what the mangoes look like, by the way, when they're, um, when they're raw and sour. They are wonderful. This actually, I got this from the Asian supermarket and I chop this up and I make it into chutneys and pickles and salads. It's fantastic. Let me know how you're doing, guys. Um, is your dish looking like this? So we're quite dry and we're just moving those spices along. I'm going to put this back on a low heat and now we're going to chop up chilli and a little bit of coriander. So if you're using fresh green chilli, um, I've got sort of a finger chilli here. I'm probably going to use, um, I quite like it spicy, so I'm probably going to use about a, um, a whole chilli, okay? If you like it less spicy, just use half a chilli. If you're using chilli powder, maybe add about a quarter to half a teaspoon, depending on your personal preference. Um, and one thing I would say, if you are using uh, fresh green chilli, is never de-seed your chilli. I don't, I see a lot of people de-seeding. Just use less of the chilli if you like it less hot. Um, use a quarter or a half instead of a whole one, but there's loads of flavour in the seeds and that spongy membrane as well. So, um, yeah, I, um, I never really have understood the point of de-seeding the chilli. So, finely chopped chilli, if you've got green chilli, if you're putting in chilli powder, you can just do um, about a quarter teaspoon to half a teaspoon. You could also use chilli flakes. How spicy do we like our food, guys? I'm quite intrigued to know. Do we like it hot? Do we like it not so hot? This dish is not supposed to be blow your mouth off hot, by the way. Whilst this is on a low heat, I'm also gonna add in some fresh coriander. This was also an optional. I appreciate that nowadays, right now, going to the supermarket, A, we can't go as often, and B, um, it's just um, not as easy to get those ingredients. So this was an optional but um, really, really lovely in flavour. Uh, Julie has said, I've come in late, how long did you parboil the potatoes? I actually fully cooked the potatoes, by the way, um, and I actually did them in the microwave, but you could boil them until fully cooked. Uh, Dina has said, you like it hot, but flavoursome. Liz Lissy likes it hotter than Nando's. <laughs> Nando's hot, um, or Nando's extra hot, what are we talking? So with the coriander, if you have got it, always use the stem. I folded it in half and I'm chopping the stem and the leaves. Don't get rid of the stem, never de-stem it. There's so much flavour in there. So always um, put both in together. If you ever have been to a, um, a Chinese supermarket, they actually sell just the packets of stems and they add it to the stir fries and things like that and it adds bags of flavour. So I'm going to add in coriander. I'm also going to just 
pop a little bit of coriander on my chopping board for the garnish later on. Bring this back to a medium heat and give this a really good mix through. This smells so good. This is pretty much ready. I'm gonna just give it a quick taste because you never serve your food without tasting. See if it needs any more salt, any more chili. Mmm, that's so good. I'm just gonna put in a sprinkle more salt, just a pinch for my personal taste and maybe a little pinch of garam masala. Oh, that's tasty. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat off now because it's time to plate up. This is what your sukkah alu should look like. Ooh, ah. How are you getting on with sourcing ingredients? Things, you know, if you are into cooking Indian food, how have you found it in the supermarkets these days? Um, my Asian supermarket's been really good, but some prices have gone up. I'm quite interested to know if you've been able to get uh, your usual. Let's, are we ready to plate up, guys? Bargain shops sell packets of seeds for homegrown herbs. Yeah, very, very good point. Mum and Dad grow lots of lovely stuff. They've got coriander and mint. Um, my garden isn't, um, I don't really, I don't know if you can see my garden. I don't have any grass, but I need to get some pots on the go. Um, I need to join in with that. How are we looking? Does your dish look like this? This is what we need to know. Okay, I wanna get my plate ready so we can start to um, plate up. So I'm gonna make some space. Let's move this out of the way. Anna grows her own herbs, fantastic. Nearest supermarket's 20 miles, goodness me. Where do you live? It's crazy. Yeah, it goes over here. Sorry, I'm just uh, making space so I can plate up. Amanda, you found it quite difficult to find stuff. Yeah, and you're in mid Wales. Yeah, growing coriander is such a great show. Also, if you do manage to get some fresh coriander, by the way, um, and you you want to make it last a longer time, you can wash it, dry it, um, chop it and put it in the freezer. It works incredibly well and you could just get handfuls out and throw it in your f food. Well, place it, sprinkle on your food, not throw it. Um, and it's fantastic. So yeah, really, really good for freezing. Okay, I'm gonna just move this out of the way, to the side rather. And then let's plate up. Um, Peter said, you're eating it out of the pan with a cobra bear. That's hilarious. Graham, grow potatoes. Cool. What variety? That's very cool. I'd love to, I'd love to um, grow potatoes one day. Time to plate up, everyone. This smells so good. I hope yours does too. I'm just going to pop it. You're going to put it in a bowl or in a plate. Are you having this now? Are you going to have it for dinner? Look how good this looks. So tasty. This also, like I said, works incredibly well with sweet potatoes. I think this is gonna be dinner for me because I don't wanna cook again. <laughs> and there's plenty of this. So this is our suke alu. I have also, just before um, I pressed live, to go live, I made some chapatis. So I've got some fresh chapatis here, straight out of the pan. So sukkah alu are traditionally served with um, chapatis or they're served with um, uh, puris, like I mentioned. Um, and what I'm also going to do is let me just bring this back up. Uh, finish this with a little bit of fresh coriander. If I'm serving it for just um, myself and I like it spicy, I'll probably also have a chilli on the side because... I eat chili like it's salad because I like food really hot. But there we there we have it. We have um, our suke alu chapatis um, and a chili on the side for me. That's optional. Um, if you want to learn how to make chapatis, um, let me know in the comments because I'd be more than happy to do a chapati making lesson. Two ingredients to make chapatis: salt and flour, and that's it. So amazing for just whipping out, especially during this time. You can freeze the dough. And in fact, with that same dough, you can make three different types of breads. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to 
to maybe we could do a a uh, a chapati um or indian breads uh, live cookery lesson um also one thing before you go one thing that i used to do when i was when i first started working in also at uni um if i had any sort of leftover sukkit aloo from the night before um i would get a chapati and i would pop some sukkit aloo in it and then just roll it up and put it in you know cling it up or tinfoil it up and you've got the most amazing let me use my fingers you've got the most amazing chapati wrap which is delicious so yeah let me know how your sukkit aloo go down at home i hope you've liked today's lesson um, and if you have any suggestions for any uh, future classes um, or if let me know how was the the live cookery lesson was I too fast was I um, easy was it easy to sort of follow let me know I'm more than happy to kind of hear your feedback um, and amend accordingly if you have liked it and we've got good feedback I, I will be doing more lessons um, enjoy the weekend everyone this has been so lovely um, to have you all here and thank you so much for those who have commented and and been interactive throughout let me know um, what you'd like to cook next but be in touch on Facebook um, stay connected on social media I'm continuing to um, I'm continuing to add lots of different recipes called Spice Club staples. So that's sort of uh, the theme. And so I'm, I'm hoping to get people um, engaged with getting that stuff in the back of that cupboard that's been there for ages. And what can we do with it? And how can we make it taste good? Because we can't get as much as we used to be able to. So um, keep posted. Um, cook, new cookery classes will be posted very soon, as soon as we know more. But otherwise, thanks so much, everyone. An absolute pleasure to have you all. Enjoy your suki alu. Bye.